Shade 45, first play. It's the homie Gray Rizzy, and we bringing you the hottest artists up here to talk about their records. And it's uh, it's an honor right now, man. This, this is home. It's home for me. My man Dave East is in the building. Yo, yo. Gray, what's good, baby? What's going on with you, man? Chilling, running around. Yeah, I know. A whole lot, man. Yeah. They go fucking bring out hoverboards in a second <laughs> for you, man. If we could still do those in the city. Yo, Boy. congratulations too, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate we it. We got the Project Car Chanel out. Mm -hmm. Kyrie. Um, Kyrie. Yeah, Apologize Kyrie on that. It's all good. You know what I'm saying? Um, you just went ahead and you signed with uh, you know, Def Jam. Yeah. Hell Iconic yeah. in in the business and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how you feeling, man? I feel good, man. To be honest, like, it's still like unreal to me. You know what I mean, just from where it came from. So the fact that I, I just did a partnership with Def Jam, um, Kyrie Chanel, like number one. Mm -hmm. on iTunes right now I mean in hip hop as it should be so that that kind of threw me off and I did it rapping you know what I'm saying I ain't got no big club record or no auto tune crazy or none of that like mm -hmm. I'm just rapping so for to do what it's doing you get what I'm saying and I had a family I got around me the team I got around me it's beautiful good stuff man I want, look, can we get right into this music I'll, I'll pepper you with a couple of questions here and there but I want to get to this music because that's what man. everybody been waiting for Hell yeah. and, and be clear man it's out there right now you could go ahead and get it but I want you to listen to it with us because I got Dave in the building man let's do it let's get into it was written now you know obviously the, the song jumps off the page to me you know the reference uh, classic joint off of Nas album mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying the actual the, the album itself mm -hmm. was did that have anything to do with the naming of this song start it off start this project off yeah um um, that's my favorite project from Nas. It was written. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And he, he got like a lot to do with a lot of the changes that came in my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And me and him had a lot of conversations about my daughter. You know what I mean, I named it the tape Kyrie Chanel after my daughter. But me and him had a lot of conversations about me having a kid early on in the game because he had his daughter right. early with him coming in too. So he had just a lot of advice for me and just, um, you know, just kept me cool through it all because I was kind of all over the place. I ain't never been around a pregnant woman before. Oh, man. Every shit. day. That That's a different. whole nother show. We could do on 30 <laughs> other channels and everybody be like, word. Word. But he, um, he was very um, apparent in this tape. We was talking a lot. You know what I'm saying? Um, Every time he was in New York, we was together. I was going to L.A. messing with him. Mm -hmm. So it was really like an ode to him, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was written. Like I said, that's my favorite album he ever put out mm -hmm. from him. So it was like a... um. I ain't taking nothing from him or like taking his words or rapping like him or nothing like that, but I just named it that because it was the intro to the tape and I feel like um, he had a lot to do with it. And I'm glad you did that because when I listened to it, I was like, am I going to hear anything? And I didn't. I was uh -huh. like, Dave did this right. Uh -huh. He did this right. Who did the production on this joint? Um, Mr. Authentic. Okay. Um, This young boy, he's super fire. He's actually um about to be triangle offense be a part of the family I'm about to be part of that family yeah, right I'm there trying to, I'm trying to cause like with me I'm not big on the super like nothing against him but I'm not super thirst for the big big producers you know what I mean mm -hmm. like, cause you really you really just doing it for the name I mean right. unless they really take the time out to really learn your sound or really try to make something that, that is custom for you but a lot of the producers I work with like him he a young dude you know what I mean he, he's unknown really I mean a lot of people don't really know of him he hasn't really worked with that that many big artists i mean and that's like one of my favorite producers explain the east side to to someone who may not know what that is east side is from pleasant to fifth you know i mean like a hun fifth hun fourth hun third to like two fifth you know i'm glad you said that some people go like, 97 <laughs> nah <laughs> that ain't hollow that's up east side <laughs> but um i don't know the east side to me is really like just throughout my life it really is the most least changed part of Harlem. Absolutely. You get know what I mean? Like, I feel like the West Side, Not I'm not going to say the people, because it's still, the West Side still give it up how mm -hmm. they always did. Mm -hmm. Downtown, Uptown, all that's still the same as far as the people, but I'm just talking about the actual landscaping and the way that, I mean, the East Side still looked like I remembered it all right. my life, really, with, with the exception of a few few remodels and couple new, Starbucks new, yeah, popped up, stuff like got that. a 7-Eleven on 116th now. Yeah, that was never there. Yeah. Uh, but, um, that's the only difference. I feel like the East Side has um, never had nobody really, really shine light on the East Side. Like G. Depp from Johnson, mm -hmm. Black Raw from Jeff. You know what I'm saying? But it was always Harlem, Harlem. Nobody really came out saying East Side or East Harlem. Like, so I really wanted to put a, a light, shine a light on it with the side of Harlem I'm from. I'm from all everywhere. I'm uptown good, downtown good, West Side, Fifth, wherever. Mm -hmm. But I'm from a high even first. But this is home. Yeah. Shout out to my nigga PJ too, man. I know PJ is listening, man. Yo, I want to get into this joint. Um, can't ignore. 
with Two Chains. Two Chains, my boy. Shouts to Two Chains too. We um we connected down in South by Southwest. And I was like, yo, we need one. He said, don't send me no damn South shit. <laughs> send me something I can rap on. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So I respect his whole energy for my music. And he sent the verse back in like eight hours. It wasn't even a, that's the fastest what? feature I ever got back in my life. He sent that shit right back. I, it's like as soon as I sent it to him, he must have like probably went smoke something, got his engineer. He just sent that shit right back. Yeah. So shouts to Two Chains. Yeah, man. This is what it is. Can't ignore him featuring Two Chains. Who did the production? I, I can't forget the producers. I want to make sure they get their credit, man. Can't ignore. Who did this be? Uh, Cardo 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 my man About to forget my boy Another youngin Cardo did Nah that's Cardo Cardo got wings He um, oh, he came shit. in a joint Working with Wiz early on Right right right, right. He got he got joints He got yeah. work with everybody But yeah he um, I think he got two or three On this project as well Alright Alright mm-hmm. um, This is a joint That I like a lot From the heart Featuring Seven Streeter Cause mm-hmm. this is like a, This is like an old to the family Like you talking to everybody mm-hmm. And I don't know How often you get a chance To do that With your people You know a lot of people Are there for the fun mm-hmm. The turn up The club The bottles And all that But it's rare That you get the chance To have these conversations Because there's a lot of people Who are behind those walls Yeah it's with me It, it definitely picked up more I um I be missing them calls A, little, a lot more now You know what I mean So that's really What made me do this record Um, Was this a real This was a real call right here I'm yeah, that's, that's a real phone call. I just that's edited a- it because he was kind of arguing with his girl mm-hmm. on that call, so I didn't want to put that out there. <laughs> right. But that's a that's a real. know I was recording him. That's a real phone call. Um, he got sentenced to close to twenty years. Mm-hmm. That was my everyday dude. You know what I'm saying? So free scrappy man. He 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 down for a little bit. I'm about to go actually go see his grandmother. Get his get his little man right and all that tonight. Right. So um, seven bodied the hook. She made. She really, really like gave it that feel. This is like that Jeanne sample right yeah. here, right? It's actually we flipped that, and I got their blessings. I just met up with Renee. Um, yeah, from, Renee be from out here, man. Group. She be still in the she, process. Yeah, she came to my listening party. I mean, me and her spoke. I was doing the, actually doing the video with Beans and um in Philly, and me and her spoke, and she was like, "Yo, you really did that right." You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like I I love everything about it, and I'm glad it's you to right. be to be doing it. I'm like, that's crazy. I can remember hearing that original record. So yeah, it's um from the hearts for for the homies that's locked up. Yeah, Produced man. Produced by Boot and Grants to the home team. Now that's home team. I know that name, <laughs> Wayne. I know that name right there, man. I want to put this up right now. You gotta wait. You gotta stay away from this bitch, Keisha. Me and you've been in the <laughs> the hotels. We've been going all around the world. We don't seen Keisha. How many hotels we don't seen Keisha outside the hotel? <laughs> this Keisha's all over the place, man. I'm I'm glad you put this is this is like the uh, I got a story to tell, but this is more man. personal. Like this is on me this time, not on somebody else. It's for every nigga that be slipping because he think he rich all the time. Why why uh, do people do that, man? Is it the new chain? I don't know. Is is it the way you know, like the the light shining me, off nah, the watch? With, with me, if that if that was a true story about me, I'm not, Be gonna, clear, I'm not gonna say it, it clear wasn't it up. or it was. Yes. But if that really did happen, is is I blame it on the drugs. It ain't no. I'm not excited about no woman or you know what I mean. It ain't mm-hmm. like the the glitz or nothing. I'm probably just high mm-hmm. or drunk. You know what I'm saying and passed out. Ain't Wind realized it. what the fuck was happening. You know what I'm saying? Winded, <laughs> bodily body fluids is out and shit. You know I'm drained, nigga. I'm tired, man. Uh-huh. How many? How many? I'm, I'm wondering how many chicks actually do that. You know, I, I don't. I like you know, fucking. You have I your would NBA All Star. My shit on. So that like, that, yeah, was like son. that was that was fiction. But I um, <laughs> I go to sleep with my shit on. So if you go in my pockets, you best I, believe I, I'm gonna feel it. I'm gonna wake up. I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna know you on me. What you doing, man? And well, I just give it to the homies before we even go in the room. Man. Yeah, drop everything off. I have, uh, in fact, I was gonna say a couple of names. I'm not gonna do that. Statutory limits. Ain't I no took that, this man. quote from um. Your, this this project, Davies, and I want to say this to you. It says, "Do what you gotta do. Do no matter do no matter who proud of you. Just do what you gotta do." Mm-hmm. And when you said that, certain people understand that wholeheartedly. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, don't get caught up in all that other shit. Do what you gotta do for you. Mm-hmm. But I want you to explain what that what that meant for you to go ahead and put that on tape. Um, when I said it, it was like my whole family, my whole life was banking on me going to the NBA. Everybody, my mother, my father, my little brother, my older sister, my cousins, my aunties, the homies, girls I was dealing with, like everybody had that banked in their mind, you know what I mean? I went to two division one school, I was nice, like I could play, but I just had a horrible attitude, bad demeanor, you know what I'm saying? I ain't really, my attitude was bad at the time. So once that ain't work, I actually went to jail, you know what I mean? I got caught up in some bullshit in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. 
I did six months in the um in the city jail downtown in Bmo. So after that, I knew ball was kind of over. After that, like it's hard to bounce back from them. You know what I'm saying? Like all that it, shit is about relationships. It's all it's hard enough when your grades ain't good. So yeah. I know if you got a, any jail or any of that, it was like it's over. Mm-hmm. So when I when I made up my mind to switch it to the music, nobody believed that shit, or nobody was like hit him with Prophet him with the red hat, black and that's my brother. Mm-hmm. He was like, let's go. You know what I'm saying? But besides that, nobody niggas was like, what? You yeah. rapping? You know what I mean? People rap. Mm-hmm. You six five? Like why you? Don't do that. Don't don't switch. Don't give up. Go that overseas. Dream. Yeah. Don't they give up that dream all that for shit. that dream. Like that, that that. I guess they didn't see. You know what I'm saying? But I I figured I can't. I never was no regular job person. I don't knock nobody that got a nine to five. Like you got to do what you got to do. But that just never was for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? I never was could clock in and all that. Like, but is is so many different things you can do to get on your feet. And become successful, and it don't matter who proud of what of what you're doing. Or I mean, it don't really don't matter who supporting it or who behind it. Cause my own family ain't believe this shit till now. You get what I'm saying? Until it it was a reality, and I'm telling my mom, "Yo, you, you about to move." You get what I'm saying? Like that's when it was like, "Oh, <laughs> this nigga really did that shit." But for Cause, years, cause for ball, they could always come to your game. Yeah, come to the game. Yeah, you're talking to the coach. You, like you know, I'm in school. Right. With this rap shit, I was back in the projects, you get what I'm saying? And I wasn't rapping 24 hours a day. So it's like, what am I doing when I'm not in the studio? You get what I'm saying? Or what am I, how am I surviving? How am I eating every day? How am I shopping? Like, my mother not no fool. Mm-hmm. You get what I mean? So it was like, now she know this is what I'm doing. Or, or I mean, this is my income. Like, I'm not, I don't have to do nothing else. Right. You get what I'm saying? So basically that record was me saying, I mean, do what you got to do for you. I mean, and they'll believe later if it is, what, if it's, if it's meant to be. Motherfuckers will believe later. Let them catch yeah, up. Man. But you just said something. You said Harlem. I think that's been a theme since we sat down because it's home, man. But Always my thing. It's, it's the thing. Everywhere. Absolutely. And this joint, when I when I heard, when I saw it, I just needed to see the three letters S D E, oh, and yeah. I didn't even need to look at anything else. I knew who it was. I knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. But for the people who don't know, he got Cam on on this joint. Killer. And I, I just bro, you gotta explain to us. How this came together, because obviously everybody's familiar. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But especially with the, the title and mm-hmm. then the content. Um, That record came together. Cam was actually the last one from Dipset that I got to really work with. But he was following me. I mean, my my career, whatever, watching what I was doing for Mad Long, because we got mad mutual friends. Like, a lot of his dudes is my dudes. Mm-hmm. So um, it was just like him being busy, me being busy. That's why we connected so late. But... We did, I think, two or three records that day, the same day we did that song. And it really came from me f- idolizing Cam. You know what I'm saying? Like, I grew up really idolizing that man. Like, he went to Manhattan Center, I went to Manhattan Center. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, he played ball. That ain't work. You know what I mean? He did the drug. I, dr- I wasn't around to watch him do the drug shit, but I'm sure he did mm-hmm. for a minute or whatever. And then he did a- entertainment. And I did the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I went away to school, played ball, came back, tried to see what the drugs could do. That shit was slow. Now I'm in the entertainment, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And we both from Harlem, feel me? Like, Cam used to be in 1199, heavy. Bloodshed from 1199. Duke the God, then lived in the nines. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... For all y'all who don't know what 1199 is, a big-ass complex on the east side of Manhattan. Yeah. Everybody go and have some good-looking girls <laughs> in there, too, God. Had to take the trip <laughs> over there to go see some things. Uh, but yes, go ahead. <laughs> well, that's where that came from, like, just me... Idolizing Killer, you know what I'm saying? Everything he did from the movies to everything. And just to, um, I ain't really know what else to really talk about with him on the song. I'm like, let's do this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's it was natural. Mm-hmm. And it, ain't nobody else did that like that with Cam. I mean, and he, he gave me some vintage ball. Like, that sound like vintage, vintage killer, killer, you feel me? So, hell that yeah. Was, we, we did it at his crib. I went to his crib. We just locked in, man. Smoked up some good bug. Mm-hmm. And just he just told me he he really proud of what I'm doing for Harlem, and for um he happy that it's me. You get what I'm saying to, to carry it on, cause no no disrespect to to nobody in ASAP. But them is my homies. Like I fuck with Twelve. He, me right. and Fur got a new record. Rocky the homie. Like, but it's just a different sound mm-hmm. from Harlem. You get what I'm saying? It's a different look from Harlem. You get what I'm saying? So which is good. Yeah, it's super good. I love yeah. what they did. You get what I'm saying? Cause it really showed that Harlem ain't just. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like one they show, thing, yeah. yeah, it showed that it's it's different types of people in the city. But Cam, you know what I'm saying. Me and his conversation went on. He let me know. I mean, I can really relate to what you're doing. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying. So, 
it was beautiful. I'm just glad that it came together the way it did. We about to do that video soon. Definitely in Harlem. Sports, drugs, entertainment, man. Let's, let's go into this joint, man. The Real is back featuring Beanie Siegel. Okay. It's been a minute since we had a chance to, you know, really feel Beans on a record like this. Mm-hmm. Well, how do y'all know each other? What was how, how long has this been going on with you guys? Like that, you know, uh, that relationship. Wayno and Beans is like family. I mean, like they've been to each other forever. Oh, I forgot, you, you know. know. Wayne, yeah. So that's, that's what really brought it together. I mean, but like I say, any situation, like Real always going to recognize Real and Real is going to always excite Real. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's young or old. You know what I mean? So I feel like Wayno made the introduction. You know what I'm saying? But if I would have been any type of other nigga, I mean, mm-hmm. see, he probably wouldn't have fucked with me the way he did. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm a certain type of person. You feel me? So that's why I said that in that record. That's right. why me and Beans could relate. But um, I think he was doing the Tax Stone interview, the one before the one he just did, the, the one before. Mm-hmm. And um, I was recording in the same building. And um, shouts to Tax, because Tax kind of put that together too. He was doing the, um, the interview with him. And he was like, yo, I might as well I mean, go lock come in. Come on in, yeah. lock in, yeah. Mac was all the way away. He was like, hell yeah. As soon as the interview over, I'm going to come upstairs. He rocked out with me till like five in the morning. I mean, or, oh, shit, hell man. yeah. My man Cash Flow did the beat. But um, I, I was already in the studio right into it. I mean, and then Siegel walked in. He was like, let me hear what you got. So I, I might have had like 12, the first 12 balls. I spit that to him. He was like, mm. Then he slid off and he started, he was rapping to Wayno. Like, he was rapping to everybody in the room. Like, his verse, he was in Wayno ear. He was uh-huh. in his man ear. I'm like, what? I got Siegel in that bag? Like, <laughs> I was hot. He not even, I'm trying to hold it down. I'm like, I'm, I was so excited because right. I'm like, yo, this is beans. Like, I don't give a fuck. How much time passed? So, I mean, yeah. I know one beans, and I I grew up on that shit. So just to have him in the same you know, in the booth together, then like at the the last verse we going in and out, how we put that together like mm-hmm. that that shit was just classic, man. That's something I'll never forget. From from Black Rose to Hate Me Now to to now, and you had some stuff in between then. Mm-hmm. Like even when I have people who come up here, sometimes I fan out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh shit, this fucking mm-hmm. fucking day of soul. Yeah. This is so and so right here. Just mm-hmm. there's a point. And I've known you for a minute now. Where I'm like, yo, Dave East was up here. Mm-hmm. When you have beans and he's like, yo, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say it. Do you fan out? Do you show that? Like, you know, it's crazy. Or do you keep it cool? I keep it. With me, it's like all of this shit is 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 bugged out to me, great. You feel me? Like all of it. Nas was the first nigga signed me. Like all that is crazy. So as bugged out as it be, I also understand who I am, and it's a reason these dudes fuck with me. Mm-hmm. So. That I, I don't have that time to fan out. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I gotta try to burn him on this shit. Like I'm right. not that time I'm taking to be a fan. That's like if you if you a ball player. I mean, I always compare everything to ball. I mean, if LeBron playing Jordan in his prime, and he 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 take a second to fan out, right? It's over. You gonna lose? Like I mean, Jordan go, you gonna you might gonna get score. embarrassed. Like, so with me, it's always like and SP Styles really helped me. Like gave me this this wisdom. He was like, yo, it don't matter who you in the room with. You get what I'm saying? Because he, he was telling me about stories with him being there with Biggie and all of that. It don't matter who you're in the room with. You got to you gotta keep the fear. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You got to somehow, some way. And it could be Jay-Z, the biggest lady. It don't matter who it is. You got to let them know who you is as well. Right. Even if you're a big fan or whatever. You could, all that fan shit, you could do that when they leave. Go crazy. Oh, that was me. Like, I just hold that shit in until he leave out the room. You feel me? But while we there and I know I'm about to work with you, Trying to kill you, like I'm glad. You know I'm mean? glad you're saying all this because people need to understand. At some point, it's work. Yeah, you got to show and prove, work. man. I ain't not, want the joint to come out and he he, he burnt me on it. <laughs> like, oh, wow. like they he be, left you. Like, I'm not doing that with nobody. Cam, Cam Siegel, Hove, Nas, nobody. Like we're gonna we're gonna get it done. How important was it for you to put this on the on the project, especially now? What's going on between communities, police, shit yeah. like that? I feel like that shit been going on. We just see it now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody got iPhone. Thanks to this phone. Everybody yeah. Got iPhone, World Star, all that shit. You seeing it. And they still doing it. They still blast you right on. You know what I'm saying? No mm-hmm. matter if you got a camera out, they still clip you. But I just feel like um, with me, like, I got a daughter now. She's six months. You feel me? I never had no kid before. So the only thing I really was living for before was my mom's. I didn't want to die before my mom's. You get what I mean? Like, she used to always say that I don't want to bury my kid. So besides that, I was like, "Fuck it, I could go." Nigga. Other than that, I don't. You mm-hmm, know what I mean, mm-hmm. my cousins, like a lot of my homies, is dead. You know what I mean, gone. So it was like, whatever. So um, once I had my daughter, I'm like, "Hold on, I don't want to. I want to be. Right, <laughs> I don't right. want to go I nowhere. Be I got to be around for a minute." Yeah. So that really was like, um, 
me saying that, like, I feel like I'm just like one of them. I mean, regardless of the the, the hip hop shit or the fame, man. I mean, if they see me anywhere with a hood on, or without a hood on, I'm just a big black dude. Mm-hmm. Tattoos, I don't give a fuck about that rap. Or what I've done for my community or what I'm trying to do for my community. They don't care. Not all of them, but from what we seeing, it look like they don't care. Yeah. So um, I felt like this record was important because, like I said, I got a daughter now. And um, I, I, I needed to let it be known to a lot of the people that may be looking up to me or looking into the hip-hop world as an out, especially a lot of minorities and, you know, black and Spanish kids in the ghetto coming up. I had to make that be seen. Like, I'm just like y'all. Like, this rap shit don't mean no... I mean, it don't mm-hmm. matter. Like, I get blasted showing a picture of my daughter. Like, you feel me? Like, it don't... I just had to... I don't I don't really do too much conscious shit. I never really put too much conscious in my... Even though I'm a thinker, I think a lot... I never really put that into my music because of my environment. You know what I'm saying? I always was around not, that not give a fuck attitude. We're going to get it how we yeah. get it. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. So that's the music I was making. Like, I make some music to make niggas zone out into that. But now I got a daughter and I feel as though my music is going to grow with her in life when she's in fifth grade. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have albums out and there's going to be people talking to her about that shit. You know what I mean? Like, you heard what your dad said? Or, you know what I mean? And I need that to be Right, you know, right. not to say I'm I'm going to all the way filter what I do because I can't. I'm me, but I could I could put somewhat of a filter and become more conscious based on the fact that I know I got a daughter. Right. Or one of the first things that I did um, when I heard she was born is is that I text her and I told what did I say to you? I said it's time to level up. Time to level up. That's a fact. Time to level up. That's all I'm doing. And I remember somebody had said that same exact thing to me because when you have that child, especially if it was your first, mm-hmm. when you had that child, everything fucking changes. Mm-hmm. Everything, including your sleep. Everything. I don't <laughs> sleep no more. You don't sleep no more. I be hype. So I go, I'm like, bet I'm gonna go lay down. I get in the crib four or five after the club. She wide awake. Right away. Like, wide what up? awake. Like, what up, homie? And ready to go. Like, What's good? Where we going? Like, this is crazy. I love it though, man. Like, it's just dope knowing I created that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We got the same face. When she get mad, she got the same little expressions and shit. Mm-hmm. It's dope, man. Or I dope. just I don't want her to never want for nothing. And I don't want her I want her views as a man to be a thousand. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like and I ain't gonna niggas ain't gonna be impressing her. And she ain't gonna be easily impressed. It's gonna take a lot, you right. know what I'm saying? Cause I'ma be the show with her, you know what I mean? Everything you can show shit, man. by fact, that age. Me and you on the same shit. In fact, we gotta talk afterwards cause I might need you <laughs> later, you know what I'm saying? We gotta hold each other down for this shit. <laughs> Where's the mother? <laughs> I, I think I've said it in so many ways, man, but I'm proud of you. Thank you, bro. I'm happy for you. I'm happy to see the growth. This has been a long time coming. I think I had my first conversation with Wayne outside of the other stuff, but specific, specifically for you probably like two, three years ago. Mm-hmm. And now we here. And there's one thing. Whenever it's dope music, dope projects, that shit's always going to find its way mm-hmm. back to where That's it needs fact. to be. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. What's, where can everybody, again, where can everybody reach you? Go ahead and hit you up. Um, Instagram and Twitter, both at Dave East. Um, Kyrie Chanel is out right now. Apple Music, iTunes. Cop the fuck up, man. Shit is, shit is hard. Mm-hmm. All original music. You know what I'm saying is, um, I think it's a breath of fresh air. I listen to everybody else's shit. It don't sound like nothing else. Nah, I don't. It's out right now. And what the good thing about it is, like, it's no, you know how they used, oh, New York, New York is back. New York is back. Mm-hmm. Let's 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 let these people say what they gotta say without I hate that, that pressure. Shit. I, I I don't really like that shit at you all. You know what? I feel like being say from what New you York. Say. I'm so sick. Like, oh no, nah, that's the new New York. Or the, just let me rap, man. I'm from New York. You know what I'm saying I'm just I don't want to be putting no fucking. New group, right? Like, I mean, I'm not no, I'm not in a group. I'm they, I'm Dolo. Like you feel what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I don't need to be put in a group. Nah, right? just let my shit do what it do on its own. Just make sure you put and that. I'm not, and I'm not the next Nas. Stop saying that shit. Nas is Nas, man. I'm just somebody he he had support for, interest right. in. He loved what I'm doing, and he he helped it, and he he behind it. Right. I'm me. He he. That's he's a legend. You can never. It's not gonna be another. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna do my shit different. You heard him. I don't even know why we even talking about this no more. Dave East in the building. Appreciate you for coming out, sir. My nigga. You know, my brother, man. Shade 45, make sure you hit us up at Shade 45. Hit me up on that Twitter, on that Instagram, at Gray Rizzy. We out here, whoa. Check it out. It's your boy Dave East up on Shade 45. The hype is real.